<clears throat> how many of you uh, were really sad about five o'clock last night? Anybody feel a sadness like a like some like something negative in the force? You could just feel it. But I've got good news today. I got good news today. There's another season coming, right? Come on. I, I got more. I got more. I'm not going to listen to some of you other fans, but God bless you for coming. I got more good news today. Uh, Martin Luther King's words and his message still challenge people of all color to be better people. Come on. That's good news. I got some more good news today. Jesus is still changing lives. Like uh, the message of Jesus is transforming people, people in our church. And I got some more good news. You've got, you're going to have a great uh, message today. It's going to be awesome. Isn't that great? And uh, so there's good news. There's a new season coming. It's a new year. And uh, you made it to church today. Come on. That's good news. Yeah, I'm just trying to help myself get happy again, so thank you, I feel feeling good. Hey, I've got an opening video for our series that I'd like to show you, it's 60 seconds long, and then we'll jump right into the message, so enjoy this. Chase the lion. Come on, somebody. We're going to chase the lions in our lives, and uh, we're going to win some victories this year. It's a great place to say amen. You can start off. Help me, help me start strong here. It's good. Uh, we're going to read a story from the Bible that that little video is based on. I want you to know that I read a book uh, called Chase the Lion this last year by Pastor Mark Batterson that really impacted my faith, and I read some of those things, and God began to do some things inside my heart and inside my uh, own faith, my own life. I said, I've got to preach some of this stuff, and it just began to bubble up in me, and we haven't had a Sunday service for four weekends. Can you imagine that? And so it is awesome to get together, and I'm ready to share this uh, with you. I want to read this scripture right off the bat that uh, that little video story is from. It's 1 Chronicles chapter 11. Historically, this is back in the era and the time of King David, who was one of the greatest uh, or the greatest king of Israel. This is, you know... Uh, Hundreds of years before Jesus Christ comes on the scene and King David begins to um, take over the kingdom of Israel as the king finally. And it's a great story. In chapter 11 of uh, 1 Chronicles begins to literally chronicle all the great things that happened in his kingdom. And he starts to list off the great men. And this is the story of one of David's mighty men. And it says this. There was also Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds including killing two champions of Moab. Another time on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Come on, this brother is bad. Come on, on a snowy day. Now, this may be the most apropos scripture I could read at this, mo this moment. On a snowy day. I got to tell you, I am so happy about what Jesus is doing. I'm angry at the weather. It's gotten to me. But on a snowy day, he chased a lion. The lion is not chasing him anymore. He's chasing a lion on a snowy day into a pit, and then he kills that lion. I'm telling you, there's something powerful about that. There's got to be an incredible, like that's the movie I want to see when I get to heaven. I want to see that story, the recording of that. That would be amazing. I think that uh, when you and I, in our lives, we all have a dream of something that we want to do for God, and all of us have that dream kind of planted into us by God's spirit. Like he put a dream in your heart. He put something inside of you. He put something deep inside your spirit that causes you to go, man, I want to do, I want to do more. Some of you, it's, you just want to learn the Bible. Some of you have family members you're wanting to get into a relationship again with so you can get them to church to experience Jesus like you had. Some of you want to start a business. You've got a, a dream. You have an entrepreneurial thing. Some of you have this 
something inside your heart that has not happened yet. And it's almost like any time you try to go forward in life, it's like there's a lion roaring at you, causing you to be stuck in fear. And at some point in our lives, we've got to stand up and go, enough of that roar. I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to chase you for once, and I'm going to win. I'm telling you that the, the enemy of your soul will roar like a lion against the dream of God inside your spirit. And any time you try to get up and recover and move forward in your life, the lions are going to roar. And it'll try to keep you in fear. But uh, God's got bigger plans for us, and we're going to chase the lions. We're going to turn around. And uh, I, I was thinking about some of the fears in, in our life. And, you know, there's different kinds of fears. There's some really lighthearted fears, like um, my wife tends to have, I got permission to share this story, but uh, uh, my wife has a, a fear of, of birds, generally speaking. And um, one of them happens to be seagulls. And seagulls are kind of a creepy, scary creature. I'm not going to lie. And so here, here's the story. When Austin was very little, uh, he was in the car seat when we had, uh, he was our only baby at the time and our only child, I mean, and uh, sitting in the back seat in the car seat, we drove to the beach and uh, I remember we pulled over and uh, there was this big opening area where you can feed the seagulls and you can just watch the waves come in. So we, we had bought some bread so we could, you know, throw it out and feed the birds. We thought, oh, this will be a fun memory and we'll just do this every year when we come to the beach. And so I'm ripping off pieces of bread and throwing it out and, you know, one or two seagulls are coming and I'm like, this is awesome, you know, and they're eating, I'm throwing it up in the air, and they're like, whoosh, and I'm like, I'm the seagull whisperer, you know, I'm thinking, this is amazing, so I'm like, I'm going to get Austin out, and he's going to experience this with me, and so I open the door, and Lisa goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to take Austin with me, I'm going to hold him, and she says, oh, no, 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 you're not taking my baby out there with those seagulls, and I said, he's going to be with me, I'm going to hold him, she goes, no, I said, it's going to be okay, she goes, you take care of my baby boy, Austin, I'm like, it's just birds, babe, so I grab Austin, I'm holding him, and I'm like, look, Austin, and Austin's like, yeah, drool, you know, and or he's having fun, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like 2,000 seagulls, it felt like, begin to swarm, like somebody Snapchatted on Seagull Channel, free bread, you know, and everybody came, and I was like, oh, and there's birds everywhere, they're on the car now, on the roof, they're on the, and Lisa's, I can hear her pounding on the window, she's like, get my baby boy in the car, you know, and uh, I'm like, it's fine, I'm starting to freak out a little bit, all of a sudden I hear a noise, and I hear the sound of our 1987 red Honda Accord, and all the doors locked from the inside, and I'm like, I knock on the windows, birds everywhere, I'm like, babe, you locked us out of the car with the birds. And she says, you, the birds, I said, they don't have opposable thumbs. Unlock the door. <laughs> Fear makes you do uh, irrational things. We lived uh, through that, but uh, barely. I, uh, you know, for me, um, I, I have fear of uh, roller coasters. Anybody else relate to that? Roller coasters, yes. I like roller coasters, but when they go in circles upside down and things like that, there's one up at, uh, in Coeur d'Alene at the Silverwood that is terrifying. It's called the Aftershock. And uh, I was deciding to go on that, and, you know, your kids have a way of pushing you, and no one's like, come on, Dad. Austin won't go on this with me. You go on it. I don't know. remember. It just makes my story better. Is that okay? And he said, and so I remember Nolan was like, Dad, you got to do it. Come on. You're a preacher. You're not scared of nothing. And, he, and I'm like, I am scared of stuff. I want my mom. You know, you know, like, I don't want. I'm standing in line. I'm like, okay. And I'm watching how this thing goes upside down and how it hangs and goes really fast. I'm watching people come off and they're throwing up. And I'm going, I don't think this is a good idea. I'm like, Nolan, let's just spend some quality time playing Halo or something together. Like, you know, and he's like, no, Dad, come on. We get in there. We get closer. And there's a guy that's in front of us. And he starts to go, oh, 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 and then he starts to sing uh, worship songs, and like, you know, and he's singing, and then he starts praying, oh, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, and he's right in front of me, and I'm like, man, come on, you're freaking me out, and I just remember this overwhelming sense of, we're not going to make it, <laughs> went on that ride, and we lived, and uh, so, you know, we're here to tell the story, but I'm telling you, fear you know what the number one thing fear will do to you? Fear makes you stop going in the direction you were going. Wow. 
That's what fear does. And, and, and the opening thought I want to put in your head today is that when God puts a dream in your heart, you're, you'll always be attacked with a fear that you're going to have to face and overcome. And do not let fear stop you from what God has called you to. You know, I think about the scene in the Bible with Benaiah, and they say that lions can be heard when they roar five miles away, and it terrifies animals. When we were in Uganda uh, this last May, we went on the safari, and the lions are, were pretty docile at the moment we drove through this area, and they're just like laying in the sun, and they're just like, you know, kind of rolling around in the dust, and then my friend who's the missionary there, he He's got me on the front seat, and he rolls down my window and turns the, the VW bus where I'm there, and he locks my window in the down position. And then he kind of taps on the horn, and he's like kind of taunting the lions. And I'm like, roll up this window. I'm telling you, lions are to be feared because they really can do some damage. And uh, it was just a terrifying but wonderful moment because when you fear something, you're aware of their great power, but you're also aware uh, of, of the scenario there, and there's some places where you can do that, but facing lions, I'm telling you, was, was really magnificent and yet terrifying as well, but I cannot imagine chasing one in the snow. I think that Benaiah had to, at one point, the lion had to have come after him, had to have attacked him, and it somehow, Benaiah, and the talks, there's other stories about Benaiah and how he, he could he could fight with a, a spear that was really thick and huge and how he must have had to, you know, whack this lion down and then thought, this lion is going to come after me and something rose up inside of him to go chase this lion. And the lion had to have no idea, like, I'm the, I'm the one that's always in pursuit. And, and he ends up chasing this lion down. But, man, that initial scene, he had to have overcome what might have been Benaiah's greatest moment in his life was to overcome his own fear and go, no, I was born to continue to live and I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let this lion chase me down. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to face this thing and I'm going to live another day. Right. And it became his greatest moment, his defining moment. He comes late to the scene with King David. Uh, when you read through the list, you've got the, the mighty three and then you've got the mighty 30 and then it lists. And then there was Benaiah and it says that he did these deeds. He killed the Moabite champions. He chases down a lion in a pit on a snowy day and kills it. And then it talks about how he, he wrestled this Egyptian guy uh, and took his spear from him and killed him with it. I mean, there's these stories. It says that he was not listed as part of the three, uh, a part of the 30, but he had more honor than they did, and he became the captain of the king's bodyguard. David made a position for him and said, I'm going to put you on my team, and while I might have army guys out doing stuff, you're protecting me. And I'm telling you, when you can overcome your fear in life, the thing that's trying to keep you from God's dream, you will get honored by God because God loves it when we face our fears. Right. He loves that. And I think God begins to honor that. Uh, you know, the, the thing is that uh, lion chasers don't run away from what they're afraid of. They run towards the roar. They, they, lion chasers, come on, like you and me, they got something in us. Then we go... Bring it. I've been through some stuff before. Come on, somebody. I've been through some stuff. If you're going to take me out, I'm going down with a fight. But I'm not running from you. I'm running to the fight. I want to ask you, what are you most afraid of in your life? And I'm not talking about birds or roller coasters. <laughs> I mean, what are you really afraid of, like, in your soul? Like, when you get alone and you think about where your life is at, I mean, I, I've really done some reflection in the last couple months. It was spurred on when Austin got engaged and got excited. But then I'm like, man, I, my own kids are getting... And I started thinking about time. And I read a quote that I read in a book uh, two nights ago. And I, I, I read this one line over and over and over again. And it said this. It said, I have less days in front of me than I have behind me now. And I don't know what the rest of the context of the book, but I just kept reading that and going, what am I doing with my life? I got to make a difference. And I just, I started to think, 
God, everything I do matters what I do for the kingdom of God. The dream you put inside of me, I don't want to waste any more time. I don't want to be comfortable. I don't want to run from lions that are roaring at me. I want to run towards what you've called me to. And if I die along the way, I die along the way. But I'm not going out without a fight. I want to live for the dream that you put in my heart. And there's just something about that that just beckons us. And I want to beckon you today as a preacher and as a friend and as a person in this community to say, man, what is your greatest fear from accomplishing the thing that God's called you to? What's keeping you from going full speed? We've got to find a place to turn around at some point in our life against those things. You know, those kind of fears, those deeper fears, those things seem to not ever leave us. Have you noticed that? Like you can overcome your roller coaster fear. But man, if you've got an insecurity fear, you go, man, I tried this and something devastating happened in my life. I don't want to even get up and get in the ring again. Those fears seem to haunt us in the nighttime and seasonally and all the time. You notice that? Those kind of fears are always there with us. I was talking to the interns on Friday, and um, I really love our interns. we got some great interns, and uh, one of them said, can I talk to you, Pastor? I said, yeah, and they said, I've got a, I've got a dream uh, that I feel like God gave me to start a, uh, a business, and I'm, I'm going to change directions in college because I feel like God spoke to my heart. And she said, but I'm scared to death, but I feel like after I graduate, I'm supposed to start like a coffee company or a business where we can employ homeless teens and people who have uh, felonies on their record that can't get jobs at a regular place so we can train them and give them leadership skills and give them a fresh start in life. And she begins to tell this dream, and all of a sudden in my heart, I begin to kind of well up with tears and I'm going, I had that dream for our church before our church started, believing God, you got to start some businesses that could employ people like this. And she's saying this dream that's within a dream that God's given me. And she says, do you think that's from God? And I said, it is from God. I said, you go for it, girl. I said, there's going to be challenges, but you go after this dream in your life. And uh, she goes, oh. I was so scared, and I just needed to know if you felt, as my pastor, like I should do it. I said, absolutely, go for that dream. But there's always a dream and a fear, always, in our life. And, you know, another intern was talking to me and says, you know, my my dream that's really hard for me is I just really want to be one of those people, when you talk about them, that invites people to church, and it's so hard for me. Come on, that's real. And she goes, I just want to see people get saved, but it's hard for me to be that person. And I I love some of the things that were shared uh, Friday. When you dream what God has for you, what roars at you? When you try to get up and make a fresh start with your New Year's resolutions, when you begin to go, okay, I'm going to start serving again. I'm going to give a little bit more. I'm going to start down a direction. What is the lion that roars in your life? You've got to be able to see what that is and recognize it for what it is. Most of us don't even stop and identify what that is. We just know when we hear that, we run the other way. You know, my dog, Kenobi, he's going to turn one tomorrow. God bless him. And uh, one of the days he was not obeying me, and he's been in the house with us a lot lately uh, because of the snow. And I think we now love each other. So we're kind of past some of that stuff. But there was a moment where he wouldn't listen to me. And so the only thing I could see to, to just kind of give him a little whack was a selfie stick. So I picked up the selfie stick. And he didn't know what that was. And I just gave him a little whack. And, and he's like, huh. And I said, Lay, you know, spot. And, he, and, and I, I whacked him again. And he laid down. And so now you, the beautiful thing is all I have to do is just pick up a selfie stick. And my dog obeys me. And it's awesome. <laughs> And you know what? Most of us, the devil in our life, all he has to do is pick up a selfie stick and just go, oh, I can, and and we just go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to keep my head down. I'll stay in my spot. I ain't moving forward. And man, we got to, we got to fix this in our life. This has got to be a year where some of us kill some lions in our life, where we face it and we run hard after it. In Mark Batterson's book, he says it this way, there comes a moment When you have to quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. You have to go after a dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention. 
Come on, there's got to be moments where we take risks and go, if I get hurt, if I die, if I have loss again in my life, so be it. But I am not going to stay where I'm at. I'm not going to try to play it safe until my day's end. I'm going to run after the dream God has for me. Some of you have a reason to fear the dream that's in your life. Some of you have reasons to fear that. You've been through disappointments in life. That was the selfie stick that whacked you. Disillusionment. Some of you have been abandoned by people. You've had unanswered prayers in your life. There's fear about the enemy within your own soul and things in your own heart that you go, I don't know if my character can sustain what God has called me to. Can I tell you that's everybody's fear? But God is greater than that in our life. We feel unequipped, unrecognized, untested. Some of you have been lied to, stolen from, death knocked early on the door of someone you cared about. And some of us have been broken up with or broken up on the inside. Can I tell you that there is always good reason to fear, but those are the same good reasons to get up and face the lions in your life and go, I am not going to let this ruin the rest of my life. You've got to decide. I'm going to get up. I'm going to turn around like Benaiah did, and I'm not going to keep running the rest of my life. I'm going to one day just go, bring it on, and face that thing. you got to name the fear, and you got to turn around. you got to name the fear and turn around. At some point, Deniah had to, being chased, had to have been roared at, and he had to face his fear. I have a weird story to tell you. It's a true story, but when I was, I think I was 20 years old, I was up at Portland Bible College in Portland, Oregon which would make sense because it's called Portland Bible College. So I'm in Portland Bible College, and uh, I was living in the dorms, and I, I've had, I have had dogs attack me in my life before. Has anybody ever been attacked by a dog? I want you to know, you're my people. I'm with you. I feel you, and I don't know why I have a dog that's turning one tomorrow. But anyway, uh, I had a Doberman Pinscher one time when I was uh, about 9 or 10 years old attack me and bite me in the arm and on my ear. And that can kind of terrify a kid and can kind of change how you perceive dog world for the rest of your life. And so, you know, anyway, I remember being 20 years old. I'm up at a Bible college, and I had gone out for a walk on the hills. And uh, you could walk up to the top of this hill called Rocky Butte. And I was going to go for a walk, and I start to go through this shortcut kind of through the woods on this mountainside. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere on this hillside, two what looks like wild dogs come down the trail at me, and I can hear them barking. And I kind of start to turn around and start going, oh, okay. And I start calculating how far is it back to the dorm, and what do I have? I don't have my pocket knife. I don't have, you know, I didn't own a pocket knife. But, you know, you start thinking all these thoughts, and, you know, I need mace, but, you know, you know I don't have my mace. I don't own mace. But, you know, you just, and, and then all of a sudden, something inside of me said, turn around and face these dogs. And so I could hear the dogs barking, both of them, at me, and I just decided, and, and just with everything that was in me, I just went, Hurrah! and I faced these dogs, and they stopped on the trail, and they began to just go, Hurrah! and growl right at me, and they just looked angry and hungry, <laughs> and I'm the only thing being served that day, and I, I just remember, I saw them, and I just said, get out of here in Jesus' name. I'm in Bible college, so <laughs> in Jesus' name, get out of here. And these dogs stopped barking, and they went back up the trail. And I went, yeah! You know, I, yeah! But can I tell you that I, I learned something that day. If I would have kept running, those dogs would have attacked me. But in turning around and going, I'm willing to take you on and go through this thing, there was something that if, if dogs, if it's true that they can smell fear, I believe they can smell courage. And can I say this? If the devil knows that you are locked down in life because of fear of what's going to happen to you, then he can also tell when you rise up with courage. And I'm telling you, his roar is more powerful than his bite because Jesus won on the cross and defanged the devil and put him in his place. And yes, he can still do some evil, but the Lord Jesus Christ is above every other thing 
and he reigns and he rules and his spirit lives inside us. And the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. Come on, somebody. And when you turn around in life and you face your fear and you name it, some of you have got to go, I'm scared something bad is going to happen again. I'm scared that my character is going to fail. I'm scared that I'm going to go broke. I'm scared that if I do this, some family members might not understand my pursuing Jesus in this area of my life and call me crazy. If you can name the fear, then you can face the fear. And you got to just recognize that. You know, we teach our kids when they're uh, young uh, that they've got to, uh, when they would have bad dreams, they got to tell us what the dream was. And it somehow seems to bring it down. There's a scripture I want you to see about the roar of the lion. It's in 1 Peter chapter 5. It says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion. That's what he does. He will roar at you, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. Come on, stand up, turn around and face him, and be strong in your faith. That's the answer when the devil roars, is to stand up and be strong in your faith, which is, goes against that. I want to say this statement. I want this to resonate in your spirit. When you face your fear, you can face your future. When you face your fear, you can face your future that God's called you to. Come on, this has got to resonate in some of you. Some of you are going to have to get this inside your spirit. You're going to have to pray this thing through and go, that's right. If I can face my fear, I can face my future. Fear, well, let me just say this. When, you, when um, you know, who do you fear? Everybody fears something or somebody. Everybody does. I, uh, I got somebody nice in our church gave me actual handkerchiefs, cloth with designs on them, handkerchiefs, embroidered with my initials, I think. Really nice. And I forgot them today, so I'm still using a paper napkin, but I'm going to raise my nasal game in church in the next couple of weeks. So just, I just want to go on record there. Everybody fears somebody. Uh, fear, let me tell you what fear is. Fear is faith in somebody. It's faith in what the, the devil that's roaring at you is. When you have fear, it really is faith. You're believing that that devil can do what he says. Wow. Or you're going to have fear of God, which says, I believe that God can do what he says. Wow. Fear is a kind of faith. And so who are you listening to? Because the roar of the enemy in our life seems to always sound like it's so close to us. A couple of scriptures about the fear of God. I want to just talk about this for a second. One is in, uh, in Matthew. Jesus is teaching. He says, don't be afraid of those who can kill your body. And you know what? We tend to think like, oh, if something bad's going to happen in my life, that's the devil. But you know what? Maybe there's some stuff that you're going to go through that was not the devil. It's just life. And people, Christians for hundreds and thousands of years and even today on our planet are being killed and tortured for their faith in Christ. That in Christ's eyes is not the ultimate suffering. For Jesus, it was the pathway to resurrection and life and it was amazing. And Jesus says, don't fear those that can just kill your body. They can't touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. And he says, don't be afraid of people in your life. Fear God. And I want to say that we're not talking about being afraid of God. We're talking about the kind of fear. It's an idiomatic expression that means to have a respect for in an ultimate sense that I know that my life is being watched by God Almighty and that he will, even if it's not today, eventually reward me for following after him. And if I suffer today, God sees it and he knows, but I'm not going to do what's wrong because I'm in pain. I'm going to do what's right because I fear God. It doesn't mean I'm afraid of him, but I respect and I have faith in him. And this is what Jesus is trying to say. He shows mercy in Luke chapter uh, 1. It says, God shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. Come on, when you put your faith and your fear in God, he'll show mercy to you. He will not give you what you deserve if you put your faith and your fear in God. He shows you mercy. And one other scripture is so great uh, that Paul writes in the book of Romans. says, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. 
Come on, to walk around in fear is not what Christ died for for you and me. To walk around and own that and have a spirit of fear is not what you were meant to carry. What Jesus did was not for you to be afraid, but to have courage in the face of death, pain, suffering, life circumstances. You did not receive a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his children. And now we call him Abba Father. Come on, our, our fear shifts and our faith shifts to God, and it allows us to face our enemies so we can keep walking down the path towards the dream that God has for our life. Erwin McManus had a great book called The Barbarian Way, and he said this in this book. I've got a couple quotes for you, but he said this. When we turn our hearts towards God, all of our fears are consumed by one fear. We're called to fear only God. There is an important reason for this. What we fear is what we're subject to, only uh, uh, excuse me, our fears define our master. Wow. You know, when you hear a, a statement, somebody says, this guy is a man of God, he fears God. He's a God-fearing man. It doesn't mean that he's scared to death of God. It means that he respects God and his faith is in God and he will only do what pleases God. That's his master. And he knows that when he has a fear of God, a respect of God, God's going to show him mercy. God's going to watch out for him. God didn't give him a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and a, of a sound mind to be able to move forward in life. When you face your fear, you can face your future. Jesus in fear. I want to talk about Jesus in fear for just a minute. I, I, I was thinking, I wonder if Jesus was ever afraid. And I don't think Jesus was ever afraid. You know, there's stories about him being on the boat, and every, everybody's freaking out because they think the boat's going to sink, but he's taking a nap. You know, he's on a hammock or a futon or something, and, you know, he's just like catching Z's, got a CPAP machine on like me, and just, you know, enjoying it. Took some melatonin, and, you know, everything's good. And they're all freaking out. Jesus doesn't freak out. And he wakes up and he goes, why are you all so afraid? You're so weak in your faith. And it was, so there's that. But then I was thinking about Jesus in the garden. He's, he knows he's going to get crucified. He's about to get hung on that cross. And, and, you know, dying would be one thing. But to get tortured for almost 24 hours prior to death in the, what, you know, historians think is maybe the worst possible way you could die. And to know that that's coming and to have to face that. I think Jesus might have had, I don't know if he had fear, but he had to wrestle with, am I going to run to the roar or am I going to bail out on this? And one of the disciples heard Jesus praying and wrote it down, and we have it in the scripture, where Jesus is praying. He says, God, if I don't have to go through this, that'd be great. But no matter your will, your dream for my life, what you wanted for me, what I was destined to become in my life, your will be done, not mine. And come on, people of courage, people who run after the dream that God has for them, come on, when we face what's going to be our worst challenges, it's okay to, to just kind of break down and go, God, if there's any way besides going through this, and you want to deliver me out of this, fine, but more importantly is your will. Do your will in my life. And man, when you get captured by God's plan for you, that dream that's deep inside of you, that will be enough source of courage for you. And you go, man, God called me to this. Can I, can I just talk honestly? It's not in my notes, but as your pastor, I face fear sometimes in taking our church to where God wants it to go. I, I go, God, but what about this? And what about that? And what about that person who said, I don't like your church? And what about that church that you heard talking about you? And what about, what if the people don't want to, you know, build another building or do another campus? And what if people, you know, what if we've touched all the people we can reach and this is the end and this is the cap? And maybe it was just a dream and it's about to kind of taper off. Those are the haunting thoughts in my life. And you know what I've had to come to grips with? I've had to come to grips with the fact that God loves Matt Moult. Like, he, he thinks I'm great. He's like my mom. <laughs> He's just like, oh, you're perfect. You're awesome. You're the best. You know? I've had to come to grips with the fact that God called me. This is God's dream for my life. And for us, come on, this is our dream. And God isn't going to leave me hanging. Now, we're going to hit some rough times. We're going to have to rise up to some challenges. But God's with us. God is for us. There are hundreds and hundreds of our friends and coworkers 
that need Jesus and need a great church to go to. And we've got to plant churches. We've got to go forward. We've got to keep preaching the gospel. I've just had to wrestle my fear and go, no, the will of God gives me courage. This isn't my dream. I didn't make this up. I didn't want to be a pastor. This is God's dream. I like it now. <laughs> Jesus showed great courage. You know, uh, FDR said, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than the fear. It's a powerful statement. You know, the cross, when Jesus went to the cross, it taught us this, that suffering, we're not to run from suffering, but we're to face it. And we're to ask God for the courage to do the right thing in the face of our suffering and to bring us through to his perfect will. I'm telling you, if you're going through something right now, come on, you're going through something right now. You're going to get through it, but you're going to look back and go, man, did I bail out or did I go through it? Go on God's will in my life. I'm going to obey him. I'm not going to deviate. I'm not going to give my excuse to go get drunk or go have a, a fling or go sin or cuss somebody out. I'm not going to bail out and let my fears overwhelm me and Come just on. live in my room for a week or two. Come on. At some point, you want to be able to look back and go, man, that was really rough. But I kept my faith. I stood up. I faced my fears. I faced my future. And I said, this was God's will, and he's with me. That's how we want to look back at our 2017 and Everything we're going to face this year. Erwin McManus said this, Jesus understood his purpose was to save us not from pain and suffering, but from meaninglessness. You know what the problem with Tri-Cities is? There's so many people that got enough wealth to subsist and live comfortably that people are on a numb. Oh, new restaurant coming into town. Oh, that's great. Oh, new vacation. Going to buy a little better home. Going to remodel. And that was not God's plan for us as Christians. God's plan for us was to live for the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we've got to wake up and stop living a fear that we're going to lose everything and our perfect life is going to crumble and go, I want to live with a little risk for the gospel. I haven't preached to you for a while, but I'm telling you, that, I'm just telling you the Holy Spirit's calling me to call Tri-Cities out right now and live for the gospel. Live without fear. Begin to chase the dream that God has for you. Amen. Amen. You know, our kids would wake up with the bad dreams, and like I said, we make them tell us, and sometimes it helps. Sometimes if you've got a fear, it's good for you to just like get with somebody you trust, you know, a pastor or a, your small group leaders, which are some of the best pastors in our church, by the way, and maybe another Christian and just go, can I just share with you my fear? I'm scared that if I do this, if I stop doing this, and I go after this or I do that, this is what I'm afraid of. And you just saying that out loud can give you the courage to take the next step. And so you got to name the fear. you got to turn around and go, lion, you're a lion to me. I just thought of that. That's a good one. I might use that later. Can I tell you this? Better than just speaking it to your spouse or your best friend or a pastor, it's okay to get in prayer and go, Jesus, this is what scares me if I'm going to follow you in every way. This is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid something, I'm afraid that this, I don't know if, I'm telling you those kind of prayers, God will be intimately close to you because it's honest and it's real. And he'll begin to speak to your heart in those prayer moments about the will of God and about the dream that he has for you. And he'll tell you, man, I didn't call you to that. I didn't give you a spirit of fear. You need to stop this. I'm going to be with you. Yeah, it's going to hurt for a minute, but it's going to feel good for a long time. I remember when we had to take our kids to the dentist, we had to gear our kids up, especially the younger ones, because the older ones tell the younger ones horror stories, right? And you, you go, they go, I don't, want, I don't want to go in there. I don't, it doesn't hurt that bad. <laughs> it's bleeding, and you, you know, your face is blowing up. And no, it's, it's just fine. I'm fine. <laughs> you know, and it's like, no. We're going to go to the dentist, and yeah, is it going to hurt? Yeah, a little. But then this pain you're feeling now will go away and not get worse. And sometimes God has a way of speaking to us in prayer, and I want you to know he can right. speak to you right. in prayer about your fears. And it's a good prayer to pray. When you face your fear with God, you can face your future with God. One more quote from Erwin McManus. So powerful. He said, somewhere along the way, please Please hear this. 
Somewhere along the way, the movement of Jesus Christ became civilized as Christianity. We created a religion using the name of Jesus Christ and convinced ourselves that God's optimal desire for our life was to insulate us in a spiritual bubble where we risk nothing, sacrifice nothing, lose nothing, worry about nothing. Yet Jesus' death wasn't to free us from dying, but to free us from the fear of death. Jesus came to liberate us so that we could die up front and then live. Yes. Wow. Jesus Christ wants, us, uh, wants to take us to places where only dead men and women g- can go. You know, Jesus said, come and follow me. P- pick up your cross. And I'm telling you that lion chasers have, have decided I'm going to face my fear. And I'm going to follow Jesus at all costs. I'm calling you today to dream God's dream again for your life. To not let another month go by with you sitting back and holding back and waiting for something to change. You gotta change on the inside today. I'm not gonna give you like time to think about it, pray about it. Come on, somebody's gotta go. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna face this thing today. I just feel... I feel overwhelmingly compelled as your pastor to go get up, get back in it. Let's go. Face that thing. Come on. You're not alone in this. We're all running scared, but we're also running with some courage motor starting to fill us up a little bit. We're starting to see God do miracles. Starting to see God do the dream in our life. We're going to go forward in God. Big dreams honor God got to have a dream that you go, man, if God doesn't get involved in this, if he doesn't help me. Big dreams honor God, and God honors big dreams. He really does. When you go after your dream, or you can't go after your dream without facing your fears, and when you face your fear, you face your future. One final scripture to share with you. Romans chapter 8. I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. And then can I just throw in there? God's dream, God's plan for you, his overwhelming love that includes all those things. I'm convinced nothing can separate us from God's love. Not death, not life, not angels or demons, not our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love, his plan for our life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a lion chaser this year. I'm going to go for it. We're going to have some radical moments in in Matt Moult's life. Some of you are going to have some radical moments with God where you're going to face your fears. And you're going to say, man, I'm going to be a lion chaser. I'm going to not let the lions chase me. I'm going to chase down my lion. I'm going to face that thing. I'm going to name it. I'm going to do what Jesus did. I'm going to let his spirit fill me up. And I'm going to speak to him about it. And I'm going to go forward in him. And it's going to be a transforming year for you. Not going to be pain-free. But it will be transformative because God's that way. I want you to close your eyes. I want to pray for you. We're going to worship together. Jesus, I thank you that you're here. Your presence is with us. God, I just feel like this is so deeply what was in your heart to set the tone for this year for our church and for the people that are here this morning. And I I just sense, God, this bravery and courage rising up in some people and I thank you for that Lord you're with us and and, and we can trust you and we should only fear and trust you